Okay, everybody, it's part. It's time for part two in our series about standing up an open HPC cluster. So what we're going to do now is we have our head node built. We have updated the packages and kind of just set it up so we can look at it here. It's not very big. It's got a uh, 37 gig main drive. It's it's just a simple basic system. Yeah, as you can see, it's just a simple system. It split out the partitions and all that jazz. So we got that going for us. We've got our our uh, installation sheet here that we're going to follow. As you can see, I've already marked the first thing um, that we're going to, we did install the OS. Then we're going to follow down these things real quick um, and go through it. So our first next step is adding an entry in the host file. Now it shows you kind of how to do this here, but I'm going to do it a little bit differently. We're going to put it in here, 10.0.0.1, and it's just called open HPC. There we go. So that entry's done. We know that that's good. So we'll just mark that green. Bloop. All right. First thing we're going to do is disable and stop the firewall. So let's go over here. System CTL, disable firewall D. Cool. Remove those services. That's what it wanted us to type and then we stop it if it is a running service. So now it won't start on boot. This is what they want us to do. We'll mark those done. Bloop. Our next one is we need to add the open HPC repo. So we're gonna copy this line. We're already root, so we don't gotta worry about anything else. Oh, I forgot, there's no copy paste here. Yuck. All right, just a moment. Now, <laughs> let's copy and paste that line. So that's adding the open, HP, open HPC release, and it's also going to add EPL. We want we want both of those, so we'll say yes there. We'll watch and see if it says anything about signatures. No, we're good. Um, many EPL packages require the code ready builder repository. It is recommended that you run user bin CRB enable to enable. Well, let's do that too. It's recommended. And then we'll add it to our steps. This is something we did. There we go. So then we go back to our sheet and we mark this as green. And we insert one. Oh, look at that. We technically did this step. We're going to insert one row above. Or no, one do. One row below. And let's copy that line. And we'll leave a note suggested by EPL on install appears to remove the need for line item 25. So then we'll do install DNF plugins core. Let's grab that line real quick. It's going to grab all this. Slowly but surely. There we go. And it's already installed, so we're all good there. We will mark that on our sheet as green, and we'll put note already installed, not needed if rebuilding. Uh, we did this. We will double check this, but I bet you it is going to give us. No change. So let's grab that. Yep, nothing happened. So, but we will still mark that we did it just so that we have it marked. And then we're going to start installing the base packages. Now, we could probably do these as one line, but they want us to do them as multiple lines. So we'll do that. This is the base packages for open HPC. Lots of Perl, stuff like that. We'll scroll through here. I open on PMI. We need, we, we need all of this stuff. It's just part of what they expect you to have when you're installing the system. So if you don't have these packages, it's gonna make things harder when they give you other steps to do. And then there's some adding in some keys and all that. And there we go. And we'll go ahead and grab the next line. This is installing Werewolf, the provisioning system we're going to be using. 
So we'll get that installed. So 118 more packages. <laughs> Werewolf does use a, a database on the back end. Looks like MariaDB is what is being attached. Um, it's pretty handy. And of course we're using Pixie booting to provision systems. So they need to be able to network boot. And this needs to be open on certain ports so that the machines can see it when it is offering up the ability to give out DHCP requests and tell it about the image that's been deployed, things like that. And there we go. I'm kind of curious. Is that a time time right? I did not. Okay, so Werewolf is not configured yet, so it is very mad. So we can't view that yet. But anyway, we're gonna keep going. We will install the next package. Oh, if I can highlight and copy properly. I guess we could just kind of go up here like this. Werewolf three. Okay, cool. And then now we're going to start configuring the crony service with our NTP server. So systemctl enable crony, is it crony.service? Let's check our, yeah, crony.service. Ta-da. And then it's going to have us, let me show you guys. Uh, it's going to have us set the local stratum to 10 and then set the server to our NTP server of choice and then allow everyone to access that. So we will literally copy this line because it is totally going to do what we tell it to do. Let's do this. Hit paste. And if we cat etsychrony.conf, we'll see that local stratum 10 line right here at the bottom. And then. Go to our other lines. This. I don't know what NTP server I want to set up here. I never decided that. Uh, and then echo allow all. We'll do that quick. There we go. We will just uh, we'll add these. Now it wants me to type server blah 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 for just one, but if we go to nano etsy crowny.conf, we can, I mean, it's even got a pool, a rocky pool. I'm probably fine with that actually. So let's leave that like it is. And then let's go update our spreadsheet. So we did all of these, do, do, do. Mark those green. We're gonna mark this as, I guess yellow is good here. No change from, original config uh, and then we did this and then we'll do this one we will restart the crony so that it does timekeeping oh no so let's see what happened here so it can't find crony.service and this told us to set crony D dot service. This is probably incorrect. So let's double check our PDF. Scroll through here. Do 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 slam server right here. Crony D dot service. Let's see what happens if we do system CTL enable crony. There's crony D dash restricted. Interesting. I'm gonna have to research that a little bit because it doesn't match the documentation at all. And we even did, if we go back through our history, we enabled crony D dot service, but we can't start at crony D dot service. We can now, but we typed that command. I wonder what happened. Curious. So we will go back.
back to our spreadsheet. This worked the second time around, so we'll take it. Bloop. Um, and then we need to install Slurm. Slurm is our batch job scheduling service. So we'll grab that real quick. And we'll hop over here. And there we go. So we'll have Munge. Munge is required for Slurm for like a, I guess an authentication piece. A Munge key is required and active on all nodes for them to be able to check in properly to the Slurm server. Um, and then we'll be running, it looks like 2311 of some Slurm stuff and then 3.0, you can see the, the versions here. PDSH, super handy. We're gonna be using that a lot. So let's uh, do, do, do go back over here and mark this line done. And then it wants us to copy an open HPC version of the comp file that they've added and make it the actual slurm.config file. So we'll do that. Because we want to follow what they're doing here. And there we go. And then it also wants us to copy this cgroup.conf example. So we will do that. I'm not really sure I remember what that's for. So we'll have to learn as we go on that one. So there's that. You'd think I get faster at this. And then this is a Perl line that is telling us to set the Slurm host to the SMS name in Slurm.com. So I will copy this line, but I'm gonna show you what we're setting in the config file first. And then we'll run the line and test it. So if we go to Etsy Slurm, slurm.conf, and you will see the host is listed as Linux zero. So we'll be changing this line and I believe this line. Let's paste this and hopefully it doesn't hit enter. It doesn't. And we will call this, since we didn't set the variables, we could have set a variable, but we didn't. We know our host name is called open HPC and we'll hit enter. And then if we cat that file or nano that file again, boom, it has set our host to open HPC, which is what we wanted to do. So that's how that little script works. And that's how we can verify that what that script said it was gonna do does what it says it does. And then we'll mark that as green. And that's it. We've installed the packages on our main host. So if we go back to our PDF, we are now, we've done that part. We don't do that, we did all that, and then we're right here. So we're not doing InfiniBand, we're not doing OmniPath, now we need to complete the basic where we'll set up on the master node. So they're gonna give us some information here on what we need to set for the provision.configuration file. Let's go ahead and mark this as a new section. Where we'll config. So we're gonna be doing this line set our configuration and then we're going to enable the internal interface for provisioning. So that's going to be our, um, ba, ba, ba. please put this on two lines. Yay. So that SMS IP slash internal net mask and the device name, which we did, I did change to ENS, uh, 19 because I have an 18 and a 19. I'll show you what I mean there. I did have it as ETH0 and ETH1, um, but if we look, I just left them alone. It's easier, <laughs> honestly. I could have changed them when I was deploying Rocky and I didn't think to do it. I was just trying to deploy the system. So this is our provisioning network card. As you can see, the 10.0.0.1. It is its own network. And then this is our connected to our network here where we can access the system via SSH. So it's using a network that is existing on a network switch. This is actually a software to find the network on my Proxmox host. So it's gonna actually manage that network itself as a very simple flat network, nothing, nothing big there. Uh, okay, so we go back over here. 
and we add these lines to turn on HTTPD, DHCPD, and TFTP. So these three services are needed to do the PICTI booting and create the provisioning environment that the nodes will see when we boot them up and tell them to talk to the head node for provision. And then this is when we will start the defining the compute node for provisioning. So we will go ahead and stop here. This will be part, this will be part three is we'll set this up and we'll start building this original image. This takes a while to do. So we'll go pretty slow through here um, and kind of go through it step by step by step. And this will be a much longer video just about getting werewolf configured to provision nodes to, to mount. So, and that's where we'll start on our next video. Thanks for tuning in this one and we'll see you in the next one.